Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Sejanus, his fall, and we get to hear from Affer today in Act 3, Scene 1, which has already been quite a scene. We had Tiberius in his grief, introducing Nero and Drusus Jr. to the Senate because Drusus Sr. has been killed. And then everybody re-pledged their allegiance to Tiberius, and then they bring in Silius and put him on trial, which he tried very hard to fight against and say that he was not a traitor and to say that he wasn't extorting money while he was off being a war hero, but they were having none of it. And he figured out that this was them just setting him up because they don't like him. So rather than become Tiberius prisoner or have his name be smirched by being found guilty of all these crimes, he killed himself in court. He stabbed himself. And the Agrippina group was upset by this, but they also understood the nobility of his action in wanting to control his own demise, as opposed to falling victim to Tiberius' crew. But And Tiberius and his crew were like, ah, we wanted to kill him. You know, is, is he actually dead? That's too bad that we couldn't actually carry out his sentence and, and convict him and all these sorts of things. So then they just move on to the next one and they bring in Cordus. And they uh, accuse Cordus of sedition because Cordus was writing these annals of history. And in these annals of history, he said that Brutus was a great Roman and that Cassius was the last of the true Romans. And this sort of sends a, a shiver through the crowd when they're like, oh, what is this? And they're like, you know, if, if Cassius was the last of the Romans, then what does that make Tiberius? What does that make our current Caesar? And Affer jumps in and says, my lords, this strikes at every Roman's private in whom reigns gentry and a state of spirit. To have a Brutus brought in parallel, a parasite, an enemy of his country, ranked and preferred to any real worth that Rome now holds. This is most strangely invective, most full of spite and insolent upbraiding. Nor is the time alone is here despised, but the whole man of time, yea, Caesar's self brought in disvalue, and he aimed at most by oblique glance of his licentious pen. Caesar, if Cassius were the last of Romans, thou hast no name. So this is Affer just making sure that everybody knows how serious this statement is that Cordus made in his Annals of History. He's like, this, this affects all of us. First of all, to have Brutus, an enemy of the country, compared to our current wonderful, amazing Emperor Tiberius, like this is, this is weird and this, this messes with the whole space-time continuum, basically. He's like, this, this makes no sense. This has thrown everything out of whack and it, it devalues Tiberius, our current emperor. It, it knocks him down and says that he is worth nothing, which is, you know, all the result of Corge's pen taking him down. And then he turns, addresses Caesar directly, addresses Tiberius directly, and says, you know, if Cassius was the last of the true Romans, then you are nothing. Like, sort of begging Tiberius now to respond to this and to jump on board with indicting Cordus. So Tiberius is like, everybody, be quiet. Let him answer. And of course, Cordus is going to respond in the form of a monologue that we will hear tomorrow. So we'll see you then for that. Mwah.